Uh, so I'm Nick Nisi, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, AMD uh, and RequireJS. So uh, RequireJS is is this library right here. Um, it's the JavaScript module loader. Uh, I've I've only used it in browser, but apparently it can be used in other environments such as Node. Uh, but Node has its common JS thing, which is what we use. But um, the, the way I, I started learning about RequireJS is through Dojo. Um, in Dojo 1.7, they switched to be fully AMD compliant. And so when you, if you're in asynchronous um, Dojo mode, you, instead of getting a global Dojo object like you would with uh, jQuery or, or any of those other frameworks, uh, you only get the, the require and define function and then everything else you have to load as you need it. So the Dojo library is kind of been split into lots of tiny little libraries that you can just slurp in when you need them, uh, which is nice because you don't have to load the entire thing, but it's a pain because you have to go search and find where which where everything moved to um, and pull it in. But I'm not using Dojo in this. I'm just using straight require and backbone and uh, jQuery. And so, um, here I have an app, and it's a simple, just a simple Node app uh, that will just serve some, some oh, uh, an index page that will just load RequireJS right here. That's the only JavaScript I'm loading. Uh, require, and then I'm actually calling Require and telling it to load this main. Uh, so I'll show you what happens. Oh, and on here I tell require with, through a, an HTML5 data tag uh, that its main is config.js. But you can drop the JS because it just assumes it. So in my demo, uh, or actually right here is the config. And when I open that up, uh, I can tell, I can configure Dojo, or I'm sorry, require to be, um, to be set up the way I want it. So I can tell it that uh, these are the libraries I'm going to be using, so specifically create paths to this, these, uh, jQuery underscore backbone, handlebars, Twitter bootstrap, which I'm not using, but um, so instead of having to type every time I need to require something, type assets, JS, libs, jQuery, I can just type jQuery and underscore. Uh, but those libraries, jQuery underscore and backbone, aren't, and uh, handlebars aren't AMD compliant, so I need to shim them. Well, which is right here and so I just say when I call handlebars just return me the global handlebars object that it creates and when I recall same thing with underscore return me underscore jQuery and then backbone depends on underscore and jQuery being loaded first so load those first then re uh, return me the global backbone object and uh, and then down here I'm just telling it to require the main the um, or, I'm sorry, just tell it, telling you what to do when it can't load um, a file. And so, right here with that base URL, uh, I'm telling it just where my code is loaded. So it'll be slash assets JS, which is, uh, you can see in my public directory here, it's, it would be slash assets and then uh, JS libs. And then here's all, here's all of my libraries that I'm using. Um, and then I'm also telling it uh, by default when it loads to load these packages. So this package is uh, called demo, and that's this code right here, at, and it's at slash demo. And then um, in here it's going to look by default for a main.js to run. And you can see in the um, in the template here, I'm just calling that automatically. So that's what I'm running is this main. And then in here I can just tell it to, uh, this is what a define looks like. So you have two things in, in uh, two things that require gives you is a require and a define. So if I just uh, create a new file, um, I can, so the main, the first uh, function to run, you usually only have one of these in a um, in a file in a project, but you can have multiple if you need it. Is a require 
and so you would just type require and then pass it an array of strings that you need to require in and then a callback when all of those have been loaded and so if I need jQuery in here I can just say I need jQuery and I need backbone and then in here I can just give it what I want to reference those as and then I can write my normal JavaScript code right here using um, using jQuery and Backbone just like normal and I'm guaranteed to be running with jQuery and Backbone both available to me. Um, so that's using a require function and the other way is using a define and that's when you want to define a asynchronous module and so it has kind of the same syntax you say define and then pass it the array and give it oops, give it a function and in here I, I can still get the uh, the code or the uh, dependencies I need and then I can inside of this uh, function I have to return something with a define so I can return um, you know my backbone dot model dot extend if I was creating a new mo uh, backbone model or whatever and um, yeah so then later this is in a file called demo.js so then later I could call if I wanted to require demo all I'd have to do is just say require or define and then pass in demo and then uh, inside of here demo would be the model that I just created and returned in there. But so I have uh, some working code. Hopefully, kind of threw this together at the last second. But um, I'll have to start my server. But I use syntax highlighting. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot of been plugins and goodness. Anyway, um, so the way I'm loading this, and th this is just kind of, uh, I, I kind of stripped down the app that I'm working on from day to day to uh, fit this. And cool, nothing loads. So. Yeah, so I made a physical hook with required. Uh, <laughs> um, so I'm using Backbone for this, um, and what happens is this demo slash main.js is what gets run immediately. So I'm I'm doing my define, and uh, you can see in here this is the only require I'm using is just right inside the HTML, uh, but then it's calling this main and this is getting run it's returning this function which will get uh, I'm sorry I'm sorry it's returning app which is a kind of my global um, I'm using the mediator pattern so it's my global mediator that's getting returned but uh, I'm return I'm requiring everything I need so this is my mediator I have it in my config I have it alias to app so I can just call app from anywhere instead of having to type out the uh, type out the path to it. These, so you can see where my um, my main is right here, and then I have a router right here, and so I can use um, relative paths from where my file is at. So right here, I'm just calling that router, and then inside of that, this views this app uh, view, and then Backbone and jQuery, I'm passing them in, and using them. Um, so I'm, I instantiate my new router, and I don't keep a um, an instance of it around because I don't care about it. Uh, and then I'm using a pub sub model, and, and so I subscribe to these mod when when all of my modules have loaded. And this is kind of just the way I'm doing it. But um, when when all my modules have loaded, then do the backbone history start, which takes over and can do the push state and all of that. 
But here is where I actually call the start and I'm telling it to load these modules. So um, in my mediator, Oh, that was my fuzzy file find, but it's for some reason it's not working. I don't know why. Yeah, control P. I use control P But so I'm creating these uh, publish and subscribe, um, and then this start is what I'm calling right now. And when I when I call start, I'm passing it a module name and a um, and then it's using jQuery deferreds to um, to keep track of when when the modules have loaded and whatnot, and and then set everything up. But right here, it's calling this load function, which is private to this file, um, right up at the top here. And when load gets called, it's just calling require on its own, and specifically requiring that module name slash main. So you can see over here, I have this modules directory, and I have different modules in here and then they have a main and that's what it's calling uh, or it, it, that's what it's loading in and then once that's loaded in it just checks to see if it's returning a function or if it's returning an object that has an initialized function on it and then calling either one of those and passing in an element that it can attach to uh, and then it, reser it resolves its deferreds and, uh, and exits um, but the yeah so I was going to just try and create a landing page view real quick as a quick example. Uh, so to create a view, I need my app um, and jQuery. And then I just call it app and jQuery. It's going to complain at me if I don't put strict in there. I have JS hint running every time I save. And uh, so then I can create my view. And I have um, Backbone aliased over to this app.mvc.view, uh, which is just a default class that I set up that just extends Backbone's view. Oops. Um, but then in here, I can just give it a render method, which is all it really needs. And then, um, what do I do? I can just say uh, this. Dot. So I just created a, the simplest view that when it gets called, it's just going to render hello world to its element. So now when I go to this should load like I said I just put this tried to put this together a few seconds ago. Okay, so it's failing because um, in this landing page, I forgot to return that view through the define. So it was it was pulling it in, but it was just undefined because it wasn't actually returning anything uh, from this function. And so now it should load. Yeah, it should Oh wait. Yeah, now it says hello world. But the cool thing with um, with require JS is it also has this text plugin that you can use, which makes uh, using templates in your JavaScript a lot easier. So instead of just saying hello world, I can actually render a template, and I'm using handlebars for this uh, because we we uh, we use it on the client and server side, and so we can use handlebars on both. So I can just say text uh, bang and then pass it where that 
template is. So it's in my it's up one directory and in my templates and called landing page dot handlebars. And then in here I can just pass it in and it this if I go into here and well right now if I uh, just do that and just pass it in the template to render then you'll see that it's just going to spit out HTML which that works oh because I did HTML but it's not actually rendering the uh, handlebars so if I did text then I just see the the string version of the the template I pulled in so that this text plugin just does exactly what it says it pulls in the text and throws it in there now in my helper method um, of course that doesn't work uh, in here this is the default view that I'm always extending and um, you can see that I I create a template uh, object right here or a, a template uh, key on this prototype chain and then inside of my initialize function, which, it, which gets called every time I create a new instance of whatever view, if the template exists, then call app.compile template, which calls handlebars.compile. And so it gives me back a handlebars function that I can then uh, use to pass data in and, and set up my template properly. So back on this one, instead of doing this, I can actually get rid of this method so it just calls the default one, or actually I can. I can just set template to that template string and then uh, this class will change it from a string into the function that it needs and then my render um, I can just call this dot super render and now I get my awesome he-man video which was in my template. But that's what... Yeah. Pretty sure it's just straight HTML at this point. But right here I'm just loading in the the copied iframe code from Vimeo. Inside of here? Um... Yeah, does handlebars have loops? I think it does. Bars, it does. Yeah, it does. But I can do uh, so if here I'll show you a quick example. I don't have an example of a loop, but right here in my main template, I'm checking. Uh, so this gets past this uh, a hash of objects, and uh, it's checking the development whether it's true or false. So um, in here I'm doing. You, it's always wrapped in these the mustaches, I guess. Um, or handlebars and then if development so if that's true then do I'm loading in my less code otherwise I'm loading in CSS and so that way I can use my node environment variable to determine whether or not I'm running less or CSS uh, but there's a couple other things you can do and, and mustache is, is pretty cool it's a lot a lot nicer than um, underscore actually has its own simple templating engine but uh, I mean, we like this a lot better. Mustache and handlebars. Mu uh, handlebars is a super set of mustache, I believe. So it can do everything that mustache can do. So you Not with mustache, I don't think. Or handlebars. This is how I'm actually calling it. So if this. This is the, the default render function that's getting run, and I'm just checking if it exists. Then I just have to call it as a function, and I'm passing in the data, which at this point, I'm either passing in, um, if the model exists, I'm doing the model.2json and passing that in, or I'm just passing in an empty hash. But then it's really nice. Uh, like writing your code like this uh, with with uh, AMD or some other module loader because you can keep everything in separate files which is really nice uh, and I can make sure you can always make sure that you have the dependencies without polluting the global namespace even though I think on this page 
like there is a global backbone object and a global jQuery object and a global underscore. Because those aren't AMD compliant, I'm just shimming them in, but so it's still creating them globally, but I'm never accessing it globally, I guess. The other thing we do uh, a lot is um, we use JSINT quite a bit. Um, I'm the only one on my team who uses Vim. Everybody else uses IntelliJ, which can do it as well, but it just checks the code and makes sure that we that it, it fits the style that we want. So if I forget to, uh, to put a semicolon there, it complains at me. And we actually wrote um, we wrote some git commit hooks that um, go through and every time we try and commit a JavaScript file before it lets us commit it runs JSint on it and if that if JSint complains about anything then the commit fails and it makes you go change it go fix it same thing with um, with uh, less, we if you change a less file and you try and commit it, it uh, compiles it to CSS and then adds that CSS file to the commit as well. But if that if the if there's a problem compiling the less, then it fails the commit. Yeah, um, I don't know. Is there any other? Question: I was just going to go over. Here? Sort of. Uh, it's like a, so Backbone has these default, it has four things that it gives you. Uh, a model, collection, router, and view. Uh, and the model is just, um, yeah, essentially you can just store and uh, get and set data on it. And uh, by default, it knows how to talk restfully to the server, so you can give it a, um, a URL function or a string, and then it knows that, uh, you know, if I give it a URL of slash user, it knows uh, how to get and set. It does post and uh, get and post and put um, and delete to that, that URL. But you can also override these method, these default methods if you're not doing RESTful code on the back end. And um, it doesn't have to talk to the server. You can also just, um, just have it there. And you can store it to local storage or, or wherever you want. Um, the view, a collection is just a, a, um, ordered set of models. The router, it does all of its routing client side, so um, that's where in this example you can see I'm doing a pound slash landing and it's going there from um, right here I have something set up where it says landing and then call the landing function and then I have a landing function over here which just tells it to create a new view uh, that pulls it, that's the view that we just wrote and uh, append it to the page or set it, put it to, on the page somehow that I specify. And then um, the final one is is the view and that's, that's what we just wrote. Uh, the views are nice because you can set up your, like all of your event findings in here and keep track of them. Um, so you don't, you're not just putting like, you know, on clicks or just having your your um, dollar dot binds anywhere. You can kind of set them up in a uniform way, and it'll call its own method, which just calls jQuery in in the background to set everything up. Is there any questions about anything? That's all I really had.